This is Station S-T-A-R, the voice of Hollywood, broadcasting a program which originates in the main studios in Hollywood, California. You will now hear from the guest announcer. Your guest announcer for this program is Norman Carey. A friend of mine just dropped in the studio to see how we broadcast a network program. I've asked him to say a few words to you. Introducing Mr. Eddie Quillen. Can you say a few words, Eddie? Good evening, folks. Listen, I I'm going to let you in on some inside information. You know, while I was back east there, I stopped at a very funny hotel. Now, the reason I say it's funny is because they had funny elevators there. They had girl elevators. And I no, I mean the girls run the elevators, you see. So I get on the elevator, and I get off the fourth floor, and I said, thank you, miss. She said, that's all right, son. So I said, son, where do you get that stuff? She said, well, I brought you up. Why, hello, Eddie. Hello, Sally. How are you? Imagine seeing you here. Well, well, isn't that surprising? This is Miss Sally Blaine, folks. Say, Eddie, I sure am hungry. Oh, I thought so. Well, have to see you later, folks. We eat. Well, that reminds me. We have a request from Virginia Brown Fair in New Haven, Connecticut, asking us to have Patsy Ruth Miller tell us how she manages to keep thin. Will you oblige us, Patsy? Thank you. Well, I'll tell you. It's really very simple. Naturally, um, I'm inclined to be thin, but I don't like to take any chances. So this is my system. Whenever I'm tempted beyond my strength and fall for a piece of candy or a piece of cake, I immediately rush right out and skip rope 100 times per piece. An ounce of prevention is worth 18 days of diet any time. Of course, exercise is all right in its way, but 100 times is enough to make you think twice. Miss Miller, here's a package for you. Oh, thank you, Mickey. I'll bet it's from a fan. from a candy manufacturer. Here's a card. Would you kindly sample this new brand of confectionery and send us your endorsement? Well. Oh, it does look lovely. Won't you take a piece and tell me about it so that I can grant their request? Oh, no. That wouldn't be right, Patsy. You'll have to sample it yourself if you want to be truthful. Well... I always believe in being truthful, at any price. I suppose it won't hurt me to take just one piece. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go together. Mmm. Good. Mmm. <laughs> I don't think it would hurt to take just one more, do you? No, I don't. I don't either. Just one more. <clears throat> While Patsy writes her endorsement, our program will be continued for another point. All right, Mr. Bard. Thank you. This is Ben Bard announcing. It is my pleasure to present a few of my personal friends on this program. It is my pleasure to present a very charming young lady, Miss Faye Marvey, a famous European film star. Miss Marvey is going to sing a brand new Parisian song entitled, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, accompanied by Max Fisher's orchestra. Underneath my window every night, there's a boy In the game of love, you know, I can hear them from my room above. He takes a home and says, good night. And you bet they always do it right. He says, good night, my lovely, lovely, then the kiss, and the kiss, and the kiss again. Then she says, good night, my oopsie, oopsie, then the kiss. 
is some kiss. I've often been asked to analyze a kiss. This is my conception. A kiss is a peculiar proposition. No use to one, yet absolutely bliss to two. The small boy gets it for nothing, the young man has to steal it, and the old man has to buy it. It is the baby's right, the lover's privilege, the hypocrite's mask. To a young girl, faith, to a married woman, hope, and to an old maid, charity. How's that? Very good. Okay. 690, 691, 692, 693, If any of you boys care to reduce, it's very, very simple. Just play the stock market. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as a young man who has made quite a reputation for himself as a handsome leading man, due to his gorgeous Grecian profile, he is being much sought after by the leading ladies in Hollywood. Professionally, of course. I still think there may be a few here who don't know just who I am. So I will probably recall to you a thing that will make you understand just who I am. Please. <laughs> When I got up here, folks, I really, this is all, I didn't expect to be called on, it's unexpected. <laughs> they only told me that I was going to be here three weeks ago, so that everything that I say will be totally extemporaneous. <laughs> Last night, I walked up and down the room trying to memorize a little speech, finally got one all set that God and me knew. <laughs> Just now, God alone knows it. <laughs> Before Mr. Brown came to Hollywood, he had quite a reputation as an adventurer. As a matter of fact, he was on the last hunting expedition with the late Theodore Roosevelt. Mr. Joe Brown would now tell you of an exciting experience he had with a very wild animal. <laughs> well, there, there was a little mousey. Just a little mousey. And he was playing in the big cellar, and the little mousey fell in the big barrel of whiskey, and he was drowning. He couldn't swim. And a big pussy cat shot a little mousey in a big barrel of whiskey, and he pulled him out. And he said, Mousey, I'm not going to eat you now, because I'm not hungry. But you'll be here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And then I'm going to eat you. And a little mouse, he said, <laughs> all right, I'll be here. <laughs> and at nine o'clock the next morning, the big pussy cat was sitting in the big cellar waiting for that little mousey. <laughs> and a little mousey didn't come. <laughs> Gee, he's got me talking that way. You may assist in arranging these programs by requesting your favorite star to appear. Just write a letter to station STAR, care of this theater. Norman Carey, announcing. 
Station S-T-A-R. The Voice of Hollywood, signing off.